Hey, what is going on? This is Mark J. Spieler, MD, aka RX Felon MD. Uh, coming to you big as life, twice as ugly, and twice as stormy today. Um, this is mid February 2022. Well, as you can see, there's you know rain coming off my windows. Um, uh, it's been it's been raining heavily for hours, and there's going to be thunderstorms this afternoon. So. Anyway, it creates nice ambiance for me. I don't know about for anybody else, but anyway, I wanted to continue on with my Kratom series today. Um, the idea with this video is just, I'm gonna go through the three house bills in Mississippi um, pertaining to Kratom and TNEptin specifically. Um, there's House Bill 4, House Bill 5, and House Bill 364. And uh, I've talked about these a little bit in a couple previous videos and this is more or less just like an update uh, I went back and, and looked them up and there's some different stuff has happened uh, pertain pertaining to these bills um, which are like you know the state law in Mississippi so uh, all of these bills are there's House Bill 4 House Bill 5 and House Bill 364 they all pertain to uh, attempts by the Mississippi legislature to uh, possibly put Kratom and TNEptine into Schedule 1 of the Uniform Controlled Substances Act in Mississippi. Um, House Bill 4 specifically deals with um, TNEptine. Uh, I went through in a previous video, I talked a lot about TNEptine. It obviously should be differentiated from Kratom. Uh, they're different chemicals, different effects. They both have opioid effects, but um, TNEptine is more of a pharmaceutical and um, Kratom's more of a plant product, we'll say. But I've, I've gone through those quite a bit before and I'm, I'm, I don't really need to rehash them here, but that's just for, you know, for the information pertaining to the background for this. So this is from Mississippi Legislature 2023 regular session, House Bill number four. I have this on you know, a website basically. Um, I'm actually looking into getting a, like a, I've got an iPhone here, of course. I'm looking into getting a, uh, like a real, like Mac, some sort of Mac computer so I can start editing things in and I don't know. I think that'd be cool. But anyway, I'm not there quite yet. So uh, anyway, this is house bill number four. This You can find this easily on the Mississippi legislature uh website they do a report on all their bills there's like there's hundreds of them like i said before there's i forget the number but dozens of bills going just to the drug policy committee and that's that's what i generally tend to focus on um well that in prison i guess is the stuff i've talked a lot about so far but anyway um this is tn eptine um the description of the bill is TNEptine include in Schedule One controlled substance list. Um, now, unlike the other two bills that I'm going to talk about subsequent to this, um, this bill looks like it's going to pass. Um, the history of actions are, like I said before, it was referred to the Drug Policy Committee. That's like a House, uh, you know, State House Committee that uh, that makes recommendations on. Um, on bills, basically, and this this bill was drafted by uh, principal author Yancey and additional author McLean. Um, I presume those are state legislatures or state legislators down there. Um, but anyway, this one was referred to the Drug Policy Committee. It got a due pass recommendation back in January. Um, the House actually, as far as I can tell from reading this, the House passed the bill by a vote, and then the next day they transmitted it to the Senate. This was early. This was earlier this month, and uh, just a couple days ago, it was referred to Judiciary Division B in the Senate. So this bill passed the House and it's going to the Senate. Um, I presume it'll probably pass. Um, like I was saying before, I I don't I disagree on principle about putting drugs into schedule one, um, you know, without, I don't want to say without due process, because I mean, obviously the laws are, are made and constructed in, in a way that, um, they can easily put things into schedule one, even if they haven't been properly studied, at least, at least to my satisfaction. But anyway, um, this TNEptine one looks like it's probably going to pass. Um, 
but as far as Kratom goes, I guess it's some good news for Kratom so far in Mississippi anyway. Um, House Bill 5, which is basically House Bill 364, it's kind of weird. Like House Bill 364 has Kratom and Tianeptine to go into Schedule 1, and it has a different author. That's Donnie uh, Scoggin um, was the principal author of that one. And then this other, these other bills... House Bill Four and Five deal with kratom or deal deal with tianeptine and kratom, respectively. Four House Bill Four being tianeptine, House Bill Five being kratom, and uh, they're authored by this other um, representative named Yancey. So I don't know why they did it that way. It just seems like it's a. It basically gives each drug two chances to get Schedule One down there. So uh, I don't know. It's I guess that's how they're doing it. But anyway, House Bill 5, which is the description, is, this is again Mississippi Legislature 2023 regular session, House Bill number 5. Description, Kratom, include in Schedule 1 controlled substances list. Uh, disposition now is dead. It died in committee. It uh, was referred to the Drug Policy Committee um, back in January and died in that committee um, at the end of last month. So Presumably, House Bill 5 is dead. Kratom is not going to be Schedule 1 per House Bill 5 at this point. So, a similar thing is the case with House Bill 364. Um, its description is Kratom and Tianeptine include in Schedule 1 controlled substances list. I'm, I'm sure that anybody listening like, understands what I mean, but I'm just going through it, you know, just to be thorough, I guess. Uh, so, it says majority vote required and disposition dead. Principal author Scoggin, additional authors Boyd, Lancaster, and Bird. So, uh, Donnie Scoggin, Donnie Scoggin's actually a nurse practitioner, I found out. Um, I saw an interview with him on the news down there when I was looking up stuff for this, and so that's just... I don't know, an interesting aside, I guess, about him, but he, he does have some experience in healthcare, so um, take that for what it's worth, you know. He uh, he proposed this bill, and it went to the committee and it died. So, obviously, Kratom has more public support down there than, than Tianeptine. Um, like I said, I don't really think you should just throw something into Schedule 1, but, I mean, they are having problems with Tianeptine down there, too, of course, but there's always going to be unintended consequences with this sort of thing as well. So I imagine there are people out there that are using TNFT now that'll probably get onto harder stuff or have problems with it. But that being the case, I don't know. Um, like I said, I don't think it's good that they're, they're just selling these completely unregulated products over the counter either. So, I mean, I think that there's legislation being proposed regarding Kratom anyway, that would, um, if enforced, if ratified and enforced, it would, it would make Kratom more, uh, much safer. I actually was watching something about Kratom. I think it was Hamilton Morris and these other two guys. I'm actually, that's probably going to be like the next little video I do about Kratom. There's, uh, stuff in Florida, these guys that, um, Hamilton Morris actually interviewed on his, one of his podcasts, well, he had a couple of them concerning Kratom within about the last year. And uh, they're very interesting. Like, two, the two guys, I don't remember their names. I'll, I'll research it for the next one. And, uh, but they're basically uh, college professors, it looked like, scientists that um, have done a lot of research into Kratom. And they actually did, like, a opinion piece and, and for a Florida news article that, that I'll cover. Um... Uh, I forget what I was going to say about, about those two, but, oh, no, what it was is it was about the safety of Kratom. They, they were talking about metragenine, 7-hydroxymetragenine content in Kratom, and they were saying that, like, certain uh, unscrupulous Kratom manufacturers or distributors or whatever, people, like, involved in the supply chain of certain Kratoms, um, they were actually, some of the, they've known of cases where, um, these people have actually put chemicals into Kratom to oxidize it, to basically convert the seven, or 
convert metragenine to 7-hydroxymetragenine, which like I've said before, is like the real active opioid um, drug in Kratom. And it's something that when you ingest Kratom, like normally your body converts the metragenine to 7-hydroxymetragenine kind of gradually. And that's why it takes an hour or two to really start feeling the effects, at least in my experience. But these guys, is, they're basically chemists, you know, scientists. Um, they were saying that like, if, if you just start like treating a batch of Kratom with some sort of, I don't know if it was hydrogen peroxide or some, or some sort of chemical, you basically convert some of the seven high or seven, some of the metragenine to seven hydroxymetragenine, but it also creates possibly not just for that reason, but it can create other free radicals and just nasty stuff. Like basically you don't want to be taking Kratom that somebody just dumped something random on to like make it stronger. You know, that's, that's bad news. And I feel like I may have had Kratom like that once. I, I talked about like, this happened a few years ago, but I bought these little Kratom samples and, and they were just felt so different. They were so strong and just they were too strong. There was something up with those. And I, I never got them again, but anyway. Um, I'm sort of, a, I guess, a moderate fan of Kratom. In, in no way am I a connoisseur. And like I've said, I um, I don't use it too regularly. I just, I don't want to get a habit from it. But I, I do like it from time to time if I'm just, you know, sitting around relaxing or whatever. Um, for me, I like to dr uh, have a, a few beers with it. You can say what you want about that. Um, it's perfectly legal and it's safe. I mean, I'm not like driving or operating heavy machinery or anything. So, um, but yeah, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to cover the, just to do a little update on these Kratom bills. I, I think it's good overall for the people of Mississippi to continue to have Kratom available. And I hope that, uh, that as time goes on, they'll they'll get into better regular regulatory strategies for it to make the supply of it safer. So that's, that's another theme. I'm always, I'm always good with safe supply and, um, you know, making sure whatever drug supply is not contaminated or adulterated or anything. I mean, just imagine if we went back to days of alcohol prohibition and then you had people making liquor and crazy stuff like in their backyard stills, like kind of in a similar way, the way people make methamphetamine, or at least that they used to more in this country before they really restricted the pills. But um, now all the meth, most of it comes in from uh, other, you know, Mexico or whatever. But point being, like, I think safe supply and regulation is, is the best strategy for this rather than outlawing things and creating black markets and creating unsafe supply chains and all that sort of thing. Um, anyway, that's basically what I wanted to cover with this. Um, I appreciate you listening. Uh, thanks a lot. If you've gotten this far, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of content. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back on with uh, the next Kratom video talking more about these guys that Hamilton Morris interviewed and, and some of the stuff that they said. Now, I'll get into a little more about like the safe supply of Kratom and some of the issues they had with that uh, in the next one, as well as the, the news um I think it was like an op-ed piece or something where these scientists got on there and wrote this whole article about uh, Kratom, basically. I thought I thought it was good, and these guys are very qualified to talk about it. They've, they've each been studying it for years, and um, if anybody's interested in Kratom and, and stuff like this, it's, it's well worth looking into, but I'll get specific on that next time. Again, thank you for listening. Take care. RX Felon MD out for now. Peace.